All right, everybody ready? All right, good afternoon. Uh, Join with me today is uh, assist, uh, District Attorney John Flynn, uh, First Deputy District Attorney Mike Kane, Chief of Detectives uh, Craig Macy. So we, we're here today to talk about an arrest that was made Sunday night at approximately 10.30 p.m. Uh, a female was assaulted in Shoshone Park. The incident stems uh, from uh, this individual, the victim, who was walking from Main Street, uh, walked through the LaSalle Metro Terminal uh, parking lot, walked down the stairs going into Shoshone Park to cut through the, uh, through the park itself. Uh, this individual was originally spotted by the victim on Main Street on a bicycle. Uh, that individual worked his way over to a bike path, at which point he confronted her inside of Shoshone Park, where he attacked her at that point. Um, she was able to uh, fight him off, and then uh, during this encounter, during this fight, she was able to kind of de-escalate the situation and talk him down. Uh, she communicated with him, and she was able to calm the situation down, which uh, we certainly applaud her for that. Um, at that point, uh, she was able to walk out of the park and led him to a specific place in a safer location out on Hurdle Avenue, uh, where she was able to get inside to a safe location, call police. Uh, the individual left that location at that time and uh, e-district police officers on the other side of main street were able to track the individual down within about 20 minutes uh, where uh, he was taken into custody our special victims unit detectives investigated the case took statements and the individual was placed into custody he was uh, placed under arrest at that point uh, lamont love 38 years old of buffalo was uh, was charged with sexual abuse in the first degree assault and harassment um, I do want to take a minute to commend the survivor of this attack. Um, she valiantly fought, and then she also used uh, great communication skills and de-escalation skills uh, during this attack to get the situation to calm down. And we've talked before, and all of us have talked before about, um, you know, what someone can do in that situation. I've praised uh, victims in the past for fighting. Uh, fighting for their lives, valiantly fighting, and sometimes that situation isn't exactly uh, present to them, and she was able to both fight and uh, able to talk her way out of that situation. So, um, you know, you, you really have to weigh what the situation is if you are uh, in that situation, and hopefully you're not, but if you're in that situation, you know, having the presence of mind to be able to, you know, find a way to calm that situation down, whether it be through fighting, yelling, kicking, screaming, or in this case at work that she was able to talk her way and lead this person out of the park. So I certainly commend the survivor for um, how she handled herself in this situation um, and was able to get away. And um, a very fast response by our Delta District officers and our Edward District officers, as this is right on the border, uh, to be able to take this individual into custody. Great work by our uh, Special Victims Unit detectives uh, that worked this case and, and brought this case uh, to a point of an arrest. So um, with that, I'm going to turn this over to District Attorney John Flynn for uh, further information. So I also want to uh, commend the victim here. Uh, I, I did all, everything that Commissioner Gamalia stated. Um, her composure, her response, uh, her thinking on her feet, uh, and doing what she had to do to get out of a potentially awful situation. Uh, but as uh, I also want to commend uh, the Buffalo Police Department, obviously, for uh, their uh, fantastic investigative work, uh, their diligent response to this incident, and being able to catch him uh, and arrest him uh, almost immediately. Uh, he was arraigned uh, yesterday morning uh, in Buffalo City Court uh, on one count of sexual abuse in the first degree, which is a Class D felony, uh, one count of assault in the third degree, uh, a Class A misdemeanor, uh, and one count of harassment in the second degree, uh, a violation. So we have a sexual uh, charge here, we have the basic assault charge here for the alleged uh, grabbing uh, and tackling of the, uh, the victim here. Um, and then obviously a harassment charge as well for the, uh, the just a pure touching of the, uh, of the, of the victim here. The, um, <clears throat> the judge in the case uh, put uh, $10,000 bail on the case. Uh, I obviously asked for remand. Uh, my office felt that it was important uh, that uh, this defendant not get out of jail. Uh, the, job, the judge uh, uh, put the bail at $10,000. Uh, as of a few hours ago, uh, he was still in custody uh, and has not made bail. And I am just hoping that he doesn't make bail and remains in jail. Uh, the um, scheduled return on Friday uh, for a felony hearing. Uh, and then we will obviously proceed with 
uh, the investigation. Uh, I know that my office has received a number of inquiries and it is all over social media about this incident that happened in Chittawaga. Um, uh, I, at this point, uh, we have no indication that there is any link between uh, the incident that happened in Chittawaga and this incident right here, uh, and whether or not this defendant was perhaps involved uh, in the Chittawaga incident. Uh, as I said, at this time, uh, there is no uh, information uh, that there's a link, and I say at this time. Uh, obviously, the Chittawaga Police Department, along with the Buffalo Police Department and my office, uh, are investigating the matter in Chittawaga. Uh, we will continue to investigate that matter, uh, and uh, we will then proceed accordingly. Questions? Speaking on the, the Chittawaga case, last June we had a case in Tonawanda where there was an assault on Kenmore Avenue. We had the Hurdle um, and Delaware Park situation happen a few months ago. Are any of those cases connected to your case? Well, um, at this time, uh, we do not have any information on that. Certainly on the Tonawanda one. Uh, the, uh, the, the one on Hurdle slash Delaware Park, um, that is being investigated as we speak. Um, but as of right now, there's no indication at all the Tonawanda one is linked. Uh, as I said, there's no indication that the Chittawaga one is linked. And we are in the process of reviewing and continuing our investigation on the Hurdle slash Delaware Park one. Well, I, as you know, Maki, I can never talk about any prior uh, convictions that a defendant has. So, because uh, that that's against my ethical rules, where I, you know, that it, any talk about any priors that he has would potentially prejudge and taint this case right here. So, um, you know, as I always do, I cannot comment at all on on if or if or, or what uh, any priors that he may have had. Uh, it depends on the case. Uh, sometimes I don't care. Uh, you know, well, I should say, I always care. <laughs> sometimes I let it go. Uh, sometimes I just, you know, I move on. It's much more difficult to quote unquote let it go and move on when there's a sexual assault charge here. Uh, I, it's easy for me to, you know, let it go and kind of just roll my eyes uh, if it's a petty larceny or a, or even a burg or you know a not, you know a rob that there's no 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 one gets hurt or no one no one's no there's no assault you know but you know obviously when there is a homicide or a shooting or a sexual offense child sex offense case anything in that world right right there um, I personally feel that everyone should be remanded, Do period. you believe that this is part of some serial uh, case? You know, at, at this point, we're, we're not gonna put that out there. We're not gonna say that. So the answer would be no at this time. Uh, there were the other incident that was brought up about uh, Hoyt Lake earlier. We are looking into this. Uh, we're looking to see if there are any similarities like we would in any other case. But uh, at this point, there's nothing to, to use that, that term at all. Can you walk through the timeline one more time? The, the suspect here saw her on Main Street and then followed her to the park? Yeah, so the, the, uh, the survivor came out of a store at about, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes before, about 10 minutes before 10.30, so maybe about 20 after 10. Uh, noticed this individual uh, doing something with their bike. Uh, she walked behind the Aldi's parking lot, then went uh, through the LaSalle Metro Station parking lot. It's a large parking lot back there. To the back of the parking lot, there's a set of stairs that takes you into uh, Shoshone Park between uh, baseball diamonds, softball diamonds that are back there. Um, they're also in the way back of that parking lot is a bike path. So it's believed that he went along that bike path. And then on that bike path, there's a, uh, a ramp, if you will, that takes you back into Shoshone Park, which is where that meeting took place. Um, she noticed that he was right on the path and came in and grabbed her at that point, attacked her, tackled her um, onto the ground. She, again, as I walked through, fought off and then was able to de-escalate and communicate, start talking to him, get him to calm down a little bit, um, and then lured him, if you will, to Hurdle Avenue to a safer location 
where she was able to get inside and call the police. So um, that call was made at 10.30 p.m. So we're you know, looking at about 10 to 15 minutes before that as to when that occurred. Um, and as I said, uh, within probably about 20 minutes, he was taken into custody. How? Like, how were they able to find him? Uh, based on a very good description uh, by the survivor, uh, patrol officers in E District uh, over a couple blocks off of uh, Main Street, back in the direction where this originated, uh, spotted that individual, was able to pick him up. Uh, officers conducted a, a show up where they brought the suspect to a location. Uh, the survivor was able to uh, um, identify that person. And then again, our special victims unit detectives were engaged at that point and continued on with the investigation. In both this situation and the Hoyt Lake situation, thanks to leave the suspects, or I'm sorry, the victims were able to get away, but as we know, that's not the case across the country. Do you think of women trying to walk somewhere? What should the public know moving forward? And what should they do? So we, we, we've talked about this. Um, and I think, you know, doing your best, look, you should be able to walk on a, you know, in any community and walk in safety. And we do our best to provide that coverage, um, you know, to have our officers out there, but we can't be everywhere every time, every place. So uh, what should you do? Do your best, especially at night, to walk uh, in well-lit areas, main drags, main streets, uh, stay, you know, right on that uh, path. Don't go on paths, don't go in dark parks, don't go in dark places, you know, don't go in back alleys, things of that nature. Um, to your best, walk with somebody, at least one other person, uh, you know, if you have to forego where you're going uh, at that time, then, then forego that. You know, try to really, uh, uh, you know, take a forward look at where you need to be, uh, what you're doing. But if you're going to go out for a walk at night, try to get somebody to go with you or maybe just don't go for a walk at that time. Um, if that situation happens, we've seen, you know, multiple scenarios here. Uh, we talked about before where you can fight your way out, yell, kick, scream, yell to the best of your ability. Uh, we saw last September when that incident happened, a good Samaritan came running over and, and assisted and aided. You know, and unfortunately, we put a call out for that good Samaritan last September at Hoyt Lake to come forward, and you know, we uh, unfortunately were never able to get that individual to come forward. So I'm asking again, if that individual is out there uh, from last September, please call Buffalo Police, call any of the districts, call our Special Victims Unit, uh, please contact us. Uh, but you know, it's, you're not always able to fight your way out of a situation, um, and I think you have to you know, do your best to remain as calm as you possibly can be in that scenario and see what else might be able to work. This uh, survivor was able to talk her way out of this problem. And again, great work by her. Use a couple of different uh, techniques. Whether she knew what she was doing at the time uh, and kind of thought that out or was just doing it, uh, whatever it was, it worked. And we applaud her for that. And she was able to thwart um, any further uh, furtherance of that sexual assault. Do, this, do the descriptions match between those two people? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to get too deep into this because, again, as uh, you know, the district attorney said, uh, we don't want to muddy the waters on a case. Um, we are looking into that other case. We're looking for any similarities. Uh, we've reached back out. We're working on talking to that other, uh, that other individual from uh, last September. Um, you know, we're going to see where it takes us. But I don't want to get too deep in right now and, and you know, falsely put something on an individual that we don't have evidence to do that at this time. Are you asking us to put the, uh, the mugshot out then? I'm going to leave that, that for you. Um, you know, that, there's, it's 50-50. I mean, because, it, you know, it, it's obviously helpful from a public safety standpoint, but, you know, it then if, if someone identifies that person, um, you know, through the media, then there could be a potential identification motion that comes later on at, at trial, all right? But, you know, listen here. We put it out, all right. You know, Kate, Kate put it out, all right. So, you know, it, it's you know, it is what it is. I mean, I, I'll deal with the legal stuff later on. Um, from a public safety standpoint, I think it's better to have it out there. Looking at the uh, city data that is published, there's been 20 instances of sexual abuse or sexual assault this year. What makes this one stand out? Was it just the brazen attempt, or you know, what's the message here? You know, you have to look at uh, the differences in these. And, and what makes this one even more scary is because they're not known to each other. Those are the, you know, they're all scary, don't get me wrong, but it's the random attacker that I think keeps a lot more people up at night. The, you know, the other, you know, terrible situation is the known attacker and someone, you know, gets attacked by, you know, whether it be a relative, a friend or something, obviously very equally tragic. Uh, but it's those unknown attackers that kind of come out in the bushes at night that uh, that really causes us all a lot of concern. 
you know, this, it doesn't happen very often. I will say that it is pretty rare in our statistics to have unknown attackers, but it does occur. Um, this is one of those scenarios uh, that is more on the rare side that was an unknown attacker. And fortunately, again, for, you know, very fast response, our patrol officers were able to get this individual into custody. You know, we'd be looking at a whole different scenario if, if we're doing a, a manhunt for this individual. Um, you know, we're just, we're very grateful to get this person off the street. You know, as uh, John yeah. said, hopefully, remains in custody and, uh, you know, stays away from everybody uh, where he belongs is, uh, is locked up. And also what Allison said too, I mean, we don't want people attacking people in public parks. I want people to jog uh, in Delaware Park. Uh, I want people to be able to walk through Shoshone Park. I want people to, be able to walk through the city of Buffalo and Erie County while having to worry about someone attacking them. And so while I totally agree with the commissioner that any sexual assault, whether it's in a private bedroom or whether it's in a public park, are equally heinous. But from a, let's be honest here, from an overall public safety standpoint, uh, you know, it's, much, it's a much bigger story if it happens in a public park. Uh, and so we need to ensure, and you know, my response to your question, Allison, as far as what can I do to make sure that women are protected in public parks and jogging, like my wife and my daughters, uh, and all of our daughters here, um, is to keep the person in jail and to make sure that when they're caught, that they're prosecuted and, and a message is sent that we take this seriously and if you do this, you're gonna face the consequences. And the consequences are you're removed from society and you're put behind bars. Commissioner, knowing that this incident happened, you're not sure if it's connected to any other previous incidents. Have you upped patrols in the area parks? What have you changed, particularly at night? Um, you know, I would say we up patrols, but we've already been doing that. That's something that is on our regular path. Every district chief knows where their parks are and part of our directed patrol model is getting out and checking on those parks. Uh, we look outside, the weather has uh, significantly changed over the next couple of days and we're going to start to see better weather. You already see the Parks Department uh, putting up, um, you know, tennis nets and, and, you know, prepping the parks for the warmer weather to come. That means we step our patrols up in those parks as well. So, um, you know, you are going to start to see more of those patrols in those parks. And it's not just during park hours. And keep in mind the parks close at night and we don't want people in the parks after they are closed. That doesn't mean that we still don't go through and drive through those parks and, and do those directed patrols in those parks. So we are out there, we've been out there, we'll continue, and yes, they will increase. And that's just by nature uh, of, the, of the weather warming up because more people are gonna be utilizing those parks. All right, one more, and one more. There are neighbors there who talked about how it's very, very dark when it's not baseball season in Shoshone. Would you think they need more lights or? You know, obviously during softball season, baseball season, those lights are on while the games are on. Uh, when they're not, it's off. Um, you know, looking at the, the bike path, the park itself, you know, probably a little difficult to, uh, to have illuminated, and that's why we're asking people not to go into parks. You know, you look at Delaware Park, there's lights around the ring road itself, but not deeper inside the park. So, you know, that's where we're asking uh, the public to be mindful of where you're walking, what you're doing. Every single place cannot be illuminated, but, you know, we've been having discussions already on, on you know, certain areas of what we can do about adding cameras, adding lights, uh, you know, infrastructure stuff. Unfortunately, it does take time, it does take money. We're looking at different uh, funding sources to continue uh, to expand our camera program. You know, it's very important on the, to the mayor, as it is to, you know, myself, um, parks, everybody to uh, continue to add to the infrastructure in our camera program. So we add money to our camera program every year. Uh, we look for grant opportunities, uh, you know, we're waiting on uh, the tech grant coming in from New York State. Uh, hopefully that comes in soon because we have other technology updates, which includes um, more cameras, better cameras, license plate readers, things of that nature that will help us in investigations, but also help to keep uh, some of these areas uh, safer, if you will. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. so closer to the back right corner of that LaSalle station uh, parking lot. So Wait, if you- Is that construction area? Uh, no, that's the parking lot of Shoshone. So if you're, if you're on Hurdle yeah. and you walk into the park, mm -hmm. you've got the diamonds. There's two diamonds behind the snack shack. There's the one right behind the snack shack and then there's one in the back right corner on uh, Parkview Court. Yeah. So I think right about kind of between those is where the stairs come down from that, uh, 
Metro Rail Station parking lot. So kind of in that vicinity right over there. Okay. Yep. 